Jeff Stash. I'm Average Joe Squad as always. And welcome to another episode of Remember the Hyphen, the show where we look at comic books, movies, and everything in between. And this time, you all seem to think that you're the law of this YouTube channel. But you're wrong. I am the law. So in case you haven't noticed, today we're going to be reviewing Dread. A movie oh. that a movie that Adam was very insistent that I watch. He, he pretty much was... <laughs> I think you pretty much, you, you beat that into the ground. <laughs> you will like this movie. I, oh, like, no. Watch this movie. And I'm like, you, no, I, to be fair, I, I feel bad because, like, okay, so to give everyone a, what we're talking about, we're not talking about the Stallone Judge Dredd movie. Although that movie in and of itself is fun in a bad sort of way. <laughs> bad sort of way. Oh, no. I am law. 20 years. 20, 20, 20 years. Law. Why is that on a meme? <laughs> oh, you betrayed the law? <laughs> no, that, that was a meme for a while. You betrayed the law! Law! Um, this movie was made in 2012. Um, I forget who made it, but basically it was done kind of on a, sh on a smaller budget, uh, starring Carl Urban as the titular Judge Dredd, and, um, you know, it was made for a smaller budget, because basically it, it, it's in, like, one... It, it was filmed in one location, um, not a lot of characters in it, um, and, you know, it was, it was released to theaters about 2012. Um, now probably a couple reasons why you didn't hear about it was because, A, when this movie came out originally, it was called Dread 3D. So th this was back during, like, the, the, the 3D, 3D cr cr which... Right around the time period I went and saw Star Wars Episode One in 3D. Yeah. In the theater. And, to be fair, I actually will, when we get into it, we'll explain why I actually think the 3D effect did really well for it. Like, I think this is one of those movies that was actually made for 3D, not that it was forced to be 3D. The other problem was this movie came out at the same time and has a very similar plot to a movie known as The Raid. And to be honest, I think this movie's better than The Raid just because it, A, has Judge Dredd in it, and B, it, it was just really good. Um, so, to, to kind of give you an idea of, like, why this movie, why I think this movie's so good, me and a couple buddies went, we were going to the theater, and there was really nothing on that year that when it was coming out, because it kind of came out in, like, a dead month. Yeah. And I looked up at the theater, and I'm like, hey, you know what, guys? We're bored. We got nothing better to do. Let's go see Dread 3D. If nothing else, this would be, a, this would be, this would be hilarious. I go into the theater. Two hours later, I come out. So do you guys want to go see Dread 3D? Like, again? Like, right now? <laughs> like, I... I was blown away by how great this movie is, and... Sadly, it didn't do very well. Like I said, and I, I think they've been trying to make like a like a TV series with it with with Urban as Dread again on Netflix, but it just hasn't gone anywhere. But like, I I actually bought the DVD the moment it came out because I'm like, no, we all I'm gonna I I gotta I gotta get this movie. I gotta let people know how good this movie is because it is criminal how badly nobody knows about it. So. Uh, why, why don't you give your uh, initial thoughts before we... Yeah, so again, I, I kind of really had no... I didn't have any expectations going into this. Like, I think that day you came over, we were going to watch Red Sun. I think I actually... Because you were like, oh, we can watch Dread. And I'm like, Adam, I don't, don't want to watch Dread. I don't, 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 don't want to watch that. <laughs> I know, because probably because I... Because he's not one of those people you can, like, force on him. And to be fair, I... I I'm one of those people. I, yeah. I dig my heels in. And I'm like, nah. Nah. But, 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 uh, but he... he Sweet law. <laughs> but no, and then to be fair, I, I, I get pretty, because I, I think I've had like, we've had like 800 conversations at work where I'm just like, no, you guys gotta watch Dread. You all gotta watch Dread. It's so good. Yeah. So I, I didn't really have any expectations. And I, on the last minute I told him like, like, yo, bring the Dread movie with you. <laughs> all I got back was a smiley face in the text. <laughs> so we, we went into it, watched it. You know, I, I didn't really have any background info to go off of. So like, I had no expectations going into this movie. Watched it, and honestly, it was probably one of the better movies I've seen recently. Yeah. Just because it was enjoyable. The plot wasn't very hard to get into. You know, it was easy to follow. And it, it, overall, it was just a very fun movie to watch. That, and it was brutal as fuck. Oh, my God. Yeah, there were some brutal kills. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, all right. We might as well get into the, the, the plot, and probably one of the reasons why I think you really like this movie. Um, so, the movie takes place, of course, in the, the, the eponymous uh, city of Mega City 1. Um... So, I guess to give kind of a backstory on Judge Dredd, the comic, because this is based on a British comic book. Um, essentially, there was a big war that, you know, basically decimated America. 
and I think the rest of the world, but you, you mostly focus on America and Judge Dredd. Um, and basically, it created this thing called the Scorched Earth, where basically, like, I want to say, like, 75% of America is just irradiated dead soil. Um, and basically, the only way to preserve any sort of, like, civilization in America was to basically divide America up into five remaining cities. Known as the mega cities. Um, most of the story takes place in the Eponymous Mega City 1, where Judge Dredd is from. Um, basically, it's a city that's about as big as, like, from, like, basically, like, the entire eastern coast of the, of, uh, of America is basically one big city. Um, in fact, you, I think they, sh they show a flat, the, the American flag in this, and it basically is, it has the, you know, the, the traditional, red, the stripes and stars, but the stars are, there's only five of them. So, uh, you get this sweet narration with Carl Urban. Oh, it's so good. So good. Go on, tell me how good it is. It's cool. It's good. It's Oh, the scorched earth, the last remnants of a, of a world, of a dead world, and in its place, the megacities. Eight million people crammed into one single spot. A lawless, orderless world. And the only thing that's standing, standing in their way is the street judges. Oh, but so basically, yeah, so basically, you know, like, it, basically, you know, in order to maintain law and order, cops basically became what's known as street judges. Basically, they're judge, jury, executioner, all rolled into one. So basically that they can, uh, they can, uh, investigate crimes, give out the judgment, and, pre you know, pre perform the, you know, the, the sentencing. Um, uh, and of course, the most prevalent of them is, of course, Judge Joseph Dredd. Uh, better known as just Judge Dredd. And basically, we catch up with him on, like, a typical day where he's, you know, riding around on his bike, the lawgiver, and basically, he comes across a bunch of uh, gangsters driving really fast down through the through the city streets, getting high on a drug, what's known as slow mo. And, th and this is actually where I think the movie does really good, because it, it really utilizes the whole three D aspect. Um, basically, slow mo is a drug that well, they, they basically they haven't been inhalers, but basically you you huff the stuff, and what it does is it it gives you a high that slows basically makes everything look like it's going in slow motion because it basically i think slows your speeds up your nervous system to the point where everything's in slow motion yeah and um it also causes like this rainbow effect around everything but basically you know like these guys are getting high in the car and one of them's driving because i think they also robbed us robbed a bank yeah or something like that and judge dread of course comes on to them and he's like uh dispatch i'll handle it of course judge dread and you know he starts shooting at them he leads them down this high-speed chase, and eventually they are. He manages, to, I think, shoot out one of the one of the tires. Yeah, and it makes the it makes the van crash. Yeah, basically. which looked really awesome because they actually show it from the from the criminal's point of view, and it's in slow motion, and it looks awesome. So he manages to kill two of the guys, but the one dude uh, grabs his machine gun and runs into a mall. Or I think it's a mall. It, it's not really made clear if it's like a mall or if it's like a like a. Like later on, because we, because basically you find out like all this, all the, the buildings in Mega City One are actually cities in and of themselves. Basically, they're like these two hundred feet skyscrapers that actually have like little cities in them. And so, we get to the scene that, in my opinion, I think got you hooked onto this movie. Basically, Dread comes in, and he comes across the guy, and the guy's taking a hostage. I think one of the cafeteria workers, and so he's got like the gun to her head. <coughs> And, uh, would you like to, uh, talk about this thing? Because it's amazing. Oh, yeah, so basically, you know, he, the, the thug basically thinks he has a, has an advantage here, because he's, he's got a hostage. Yes, he's, well, he's, he's gonna get him to negotiate. He don't know Judge Dredd, though. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Dredd, Dredd just rolls up on him, totally, like, like, cool, collected, doesn't give a shit. Yeah. I can get your life in an ice air cube. Yeah, because he basically is like, let, like, if you let her go, you'll get life in a, an ice air cube is essentially, like, a prison. In, in Judge Dredd. Basically, like, an isolation queue. Yeah, and he's like, that's your, that's your leverage? Life? Well, because basically... Punishment is death. Yeah, because well, cause Judge Dredd's like, you try to attack a street judge. The pun You try to kill a street judge. The punishment is death. But if you let her go, I can, you know, give you life in an isolation queue. And so the cop's like, or the, the thug's like, you know, that's your problem, Judge. You ain't got no fucking leverage! And, like, so, so, you know, Dredd pulls out his lawgiver, you know, the, the eponymous uh, uh, sidearm of the Dredd, of the judges. 
He's like, negotiation's over. What? Don't you understand? I got a hostage. I heard you. Hot shot. What? I said, hot shot. And then he just shoots a, like a, a, a flare into the dude's mouth. Uh, because basically, hot shot is actually... Because how the lawgivers work is basically they're... They're DNA locked to, to only be be able to be used by a judge. And they're also voice commanded. Basically, um... I think they also have a touch screen if you're, if you're trying to, like, not get shot. But basically, mm -hmm. like, you, you give out a voice command and it'll switch to the different... Because it has, like, all these different rounds in it. Uh, and one of them is, of course, the hot shot, which I think is supposed to be, like, a rogue flare. It feels like it's supposed to be more like a flare than an actual like, weapon. Or an incendiary. Yeah, or incendiary. And so this dude... Like, literally, you watch as the thing melts his skin off his face and blows the top of his head off. And he just dies. And then Dredd looks like the poor the poor hostage, and she's just like, thank you, Judge. And he just leaves. Um, and so basically, you know, it, it, I, that scene was what really got me into this movie. Because, like, the first scene, you establish who Judge Dredd is, how he does justice, and just how messed up Mega City 1 is. Like, literally in the first scene... It just tells you almost everything you need to know about this world. So, we... Um, basically, Judge Dredd goes back to um, the Hall of... Ju I think it's called the Hall of Justice? Yeah, it's the Hall of Justice. I'm almost positive. And uh, he's talking with the current ch uh, Chief Justice. Uh, who's a woman in this room? Which is odd. I mean, not like... Because, like, I, I thought the, 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 the... Traditionally, I think it's a... There, there's a man that's in charge of, like... No, so isn't that how it is in the Stallone movie? Yeah. Um, although that judge is... Act okay. Forgive me for a second. But that judge is actually not actually... That judge is actually based on a character that is important to Judge Dredd himself. See, Judge Dredd is actually a clone. He's actually a clone of that judge because that judge was actually like the greatest of the early days of the street, of the street judges. So they're like... He's dead, but like we can't... We need like judges like him... So they made clones. Judge Dredd and his brother Rico, who is the villain of the, the Stallone movie. Um, but basically, um, she's bringing Judge Dredd to... Basically, because she's going to assign him training for this new recruit that they have, Judge Anderson, who I think you really liked in this movie. Yeah. Um, Judge Anderson is a rare case because basically, um, she was an orphan. And most orphans, if they're found by street judges, are put through the, the street judge training thing because you know they need they they need more people because basically what they're they're trying to win a war that can't be won because basically they're the only things that keep mega city one running basically and i know a lot of people are like well adam that sounds like fascism i'm like kind of <laughs> but like at the same time like there's so much lawlessness and just r rampant crime like i it almost seems like they're kind of needed because there's no really other way to solve this problem. And so they come across Judge Anderson, and she, I think, barely passed or failed out. She barely, she failed out by three points. Yeah. And, you know, Dredd himself is like, no, she's going to get herself killed. I'm not. And basically, uh, the, the, the chief judge does this thing that proves that she's a telepath. Basically, her and her parents live next to the radiation walls of Mega City 1. And instead of becoming, like, a hideous mutant monster, like a lot of people, it evolved her brain so that she can go into people's minds and read them. In fact, I think she reads Judge Dredd's mind. She's like, there's someone else with you, male. His mind is so angry. I'm like, yeah, that's Judge Dredd. That is Judge Dredd. Was that gif of him just fucking shaking with rage? And to be... But, so basically... She's like, I want you to, you uh, basically, I, I want you to give her a trial by fire. You know, she, you give her one day, she follows your rules, and it, it's your call. If you think she can't cut it, she's out. So Dredd, you know, like, begrudgingly is like, fine. And so, you know, he takes her, she, and basically she gives a couple of rules. You, he'll, she'll be doing sentencing because he wants to see how her sentencing skills are. Um, if need be, she'll have to use her, you know, she'll have to, give out the sentencing, and, you know, if it's death. And if she loses her lawgiver at any in any point, she's it's over. Uh, failure to d obey his orders. You know, basically, she he, he makes it that, that it's going to be almost impossible for her to pass. But to be fair, and to be fair, I, I don't think he's doing it to be cruel. 
I think he's like, you know, I don't want to watch you die. Yeah. Because you, as you watch this movie, you realize, well, Dredd's an asshole, and he is. I won't, I won't not deny that. Like, he's an asshole because, like, he's been fighting this war. You know, like, he, he's like, I don't need, we, we can't have soldiers that will die on, like, their first day. Um, while this is going on, we cut to peach trees. The, basically what we find out is actually the supplier for Slomo. And we come across the leader of the, the, the gangsters that are making the drug, the Mama clan, led by a woman named Mama. Um, I think it's because, like, her name is, like, actually, like, I forget her, I actually forget her actual name, but... I just call her Mama. And so basically she's... We find her sitting in a bathtub getting high on slow-mo and watching the water. Because, like, it causes kind of, like, a weird rainbow effect, too. And basically, um, one of her head guys, who I, I forget his name, too, but I just call him Dave Chappelle because he looks like Dave Chappelle. He really um, does. Basically, they find out that there's some guys that have been, like, I think kind of skimming off the top, basically. Like, they've been trying to cut in on the, the slow-mo trade. So, and basically you find, you find out just how messed up this... Because she, she is a scary villain. Would you, would you agree? Yeah. Basically, she's like, oh, so they, they wanted to cut in on our trade. Uh, skin them and throw them off the top of, uh, off the, top of the building, please. And the dude's like, you want us to give them a hit of slum before they go? Yeah, sure. So basically what they do is they skin these dudes... Well, actually, no, first they give them a hit of slum -o. So they, they literally peel the skin off their bodies except their head. And then, after doing so, push them off the building. So literally, they die in slow motion. And so basically, you know, these these bodies hit the ground. So someone at Petrie's, you know, calls it in. You know, these these three men were killed, thrown off the building, and their their bodies were skinned, and they, you know, they're basically chunky spaghetti, spaghetti sauce. And so you know, Dred's trying to pick like a like a crime for. Uh, him and Anderson to go for, and she picks peach trees, not knowing the bullshit they were about to deal with. And so they go to peach trees, and like I said, peach trees is really interesting because basically it's it's like an actual city because like basically every level is like a little town in it, um, you know, complete with like schools, med labs, uh, stores. malls, stores, and so Dread comes along, you know, and. Actually, because there's a scene where basically they see this, like, poor man, like, squatting in front of the door, and he's, like, squatting, calling in Anderson. So Anderson gives her first thing, you know, like, he's, basically, he's a squatter, you know, he, you know, the, the sentence is three to five years, and I so cute. And so Dredd is like, you know, you better not be here when we come back. Which, of course, the poor guy ain't, because he's like, five, three to five years, and I so cute? Hot damn, I get to have a hot meal in, in a bed. Which, I actually kind of... I almost think that that's actually why the ISO cubes were invented, because it was more to help with the, the homelessness thing. Yeah. And so, they come across uh, one of the guys that runs the morgue. Uh, I think, because I think either he's one of the medical guys, or I he's, think a, he's one of the medical yeah, guys. Yeah, either that, or I almost thought he was, like, working with the street judges as, like, a, like a you know, like the meat, the meat wagon. And so, they, they find these dudes, and they actually show, like, one of the dudes, like, his head is, like, exploded out the back. Like, they... They do not mess around with the gore in this. I think you were no, actually surprised really, at how like, gory. Jesus. And so basically, they find out that this was most likely, you know, an assassination slash, you know, a way to show power by this group. It was the Mama Clan. And basically, you learn about the history of the Mama Clan, how they they start off as in one section of peach trees and eventually uh, edged out all the rest of the gangs. One of which is my favorite is called the Judge, which are basically this group of gang that think themselves like street judges. Except the difference between them is that they don't wear hockey pads. <laughs> and so basically, Dren's like, all right, this this is a little bit more than I actually intended. We're going to wait for backup. Unfortunately, Mama knows that they know about this. So she orders her tech guy, who is probably the most depressing character in the whole movie. Uh, I, I'm going to cut ahead a little bit because Anderson found this out. But basically, this dude was a computer guy that Mama tortured pulled his eyes out and then put cybernetic implants in so that he could be really good at running the computers. So they they use him to shut the fire door, or uh, no, the, the radiation doors, and make it seem like it's some sort of, like, you know, like, training exercise, basically, to make sure that, like, the the systems work. Basically so that they can... Because basically these doors allow it so that if, like, a, a nuclear bomb were to go off, the, the building would be okay. Yeah. 
And not only that, it I think it, it's all lead line, so basically now Dread and Anderson can't call out. Yeah, that's actually one of the big the big things that is yeah. a problem throughout the early half of the movie is that they can't get any radio comms out. Yeah, because they need backup, obviously. And the poor the poor homeless guy gets crushed by one of the, by the doors. I'm like, oh. So basically, with no other choice, Dread basically is like, all right, we're gonna have to just fight our way up and you know try and you know take out as many of the guys as we can and hold and hold the line until backup gets here. Um, so. And so basically, we get the rest of the movie. The, the basically the movie is, Dredd and Anderson are moving up the building to try and find where Mama Slow Mo thing is, and basically, kill her basically because like, you know they, they are attempting to kill a Street Judge. The sentence is death. Yeah, exactly. Um, along the way, they actually manage to catch Dave Chappelle because I think he. Oh no, yeah, they they come across this 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 Slow Mo rave because you know, they figured he he'd be dead because like they. They just send dude after dude after dude after Dredd and Anderson. And there's only two of them. Um, and so they catch Dave Chappelle, and basically they use him because, A, it means all the fire will be directed at them, not civilians, because basically, like, they're, you know, they could probably just kill, like, they'll probably just try to kill this dude because they, he knows everything. And if not, they have a way to figure out what's going on here. And especially because Anderson can go into his mind. So, and that's kind of the basic premise of the movies. Basically, Dr is Dredd and Anderson trying to stop Mama while also trying to survive. Um, and it's, and this is probably where a lot of people that said it's too much like the raid, because basically the plot of the raid is it's a bunch of SWAT guys climbing up a, a big a big building trying to get these these bad guys. Although here, I, I don't think in the raid they had like machine gun turrets that try to gun Dredd down and I think do more killing themselves than they do Dredd. No, that scene was awesome. Um, what are your favorite scenes during all this? Uh, wanna... pro probably that scene. Um, the scene where Anderson goes into the guy's mind and just kind of fucks with him. Oh, it makes him think Mama, uh, to quote but... the movie, feminized him. <laughs> yeah, that, that one was great. Probably the entire end battle sequence was pretty yep. good. Um... Highlights for me was was just Carl Urban of himself because he is perfect as Dread. Like he never takes the helmet off like Dread. Because like the, like Stallone like, you know like when he did it like a little bit for I apparently from what I understand Stallone was actually a big Judge Dread guy. It was actually willing to keep the helmet on, but I think basically like you know the producer was like no nobody's coming to see this movie for Judge Dread they're coming to see you so you're gonna take that helmet off. And, then, and honestly, because it's one of the, the bigger problems I have with that movie, but Urban is just awesome in this movie. Like, every line of him is pitch perfect. One of my favorites is when he hacks into the, the intercom system, because basically all of the people in Peachtrees are like, no, we're not messing with you. We'll let Mama do have her fun. It's just a couple street judges will be okay. Because um, one of the guys that they, um, they have to execute early on, because basically... He tells her she like you know he's like dying. You give the sentencing, and he she almost doesn't kill him at first, but then she she does. Later on, she meets the dude's wife because she's like I'm not like basically they hide in her house and she's like there's a, a, an elevator you can escape to. I'm not doing this to, to help you. I'm doing it because it'll it mean if you're here, it means my husband hasn't been killed. And then she sees the pictures and realizes she's the one who killed her husband, which was was rough because <laughs> like. One of the things I do like about this film is that, like, Anderson is, you know, like, she, in spite of not being very good at her job, she wants to do good, because she wants to help people, and she actually, like, believes in being a good street judge. But then you have Dredd, who's rough and, you know, gruff and doesn't take shit. But, like, at the same time, you can tell that there's still a decent man in the, under all that rage and anger, because he's just trying to do what he believes is best, which is to obey... At the end of the day, the he's law. just trying to do his job. Because, like, one of my favorite moments um, is a, a couple of kids who want to join the Mama clan hold guns up to them, and Dredd's like... Like, they're like, don't move! And Dredd's like, why? Well, because like, they're, they're, they're little pistols. They probably won't even hit the through the body armor. Yeah, exactly. And probably, so, like... It's probably a forty five if anything. So, like, he, he offers them, like, put the guns down, and, and you could just go into a juvie cube. Which I, I guess is like ju like juvie, but like for an ISO cube. So, and but then like you know like eventually the Mama Clan catches up to them, and I think I think at that point Anderson gets captured. 
Yeah, and it's, it's right at that point because the guy manages to oh yeah he to get the, her in a chokehold yeah and so dreads like being you know shot at so like he has to escape to you know regroup and then get anderson back so he he sets the gun to stun and it shoots these like electric taser bolts that knock them out like showing that he was not going to shoot them like for for as cruel as dread is he's not going to shoot kids yeah exactly so like, again at the end of the day he's just trying to do his job yeah um, what do you think about, like, the costuming and the design work in this? Um, the costuming design in this was excellent. Like, it really... The costuming and the set design itself really helped add to the entire... You know, this this is a world that yeah. ha- has gone off the deep end type of feel to it. It, yeah. it kind of had a Mad Max vibe to it. Yeah, I kind of figured you'd like that, especially because you're such a Fallout per- guy. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm As someone who loves Fallout, like I did, I saw a lot of comparisons. And honestly, like, some of the gun designs especially, like, reminded yeah. me of stuff in Fallout. Um... For me, it helps that, like, it just does so much good. Like, is it... I know a lot of people will say that, like, the Stallone Dread is better than this because it's much more, like, in line with the parody dynamic. But, like, for me, like, while Dread was a parody, like, the action when it was action was phenomenal. Like, like the part where, like, you know, you have the chain guns going off and Dread has to, like, blow a hole with the high X rounds through... And he ends up on that skate part that's, like, 50 feet up. That skate part was was whack. Yeah, was like there's like, no safety rails. Fuck, <coughs> fuck up and, and you die. Yeah, like that's some extreme skater die. <laughs> skater die. That was some extreme sports right there. I also really love that scene because like it's the only scene where like they're outside for most of the film, and they realize that like you know while they they were able to get a message out, they can't stay there because a there's kids there, and b they'd be sh- they'd be sitting ducks. Be like shooting a fish in a barrel. Yeah, and so they had to go back in. Um, I also like that they, they, they make it that Dredd's gun doesn't just fire forever. Like, they, they have limited ammo, they only have so much, like, like, cause, like, they only have, like, dr- like, field dressing kits, you know, it, it, like, there's no lot, like, th- they left their bikes downstairs, so they can't get, like, extra ammunition or whatever else on the bike, cause I, I think the bikes actually have, like, a shotgun that they have on the back for, like, much harder, like, things. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, for me, like, like my one of my favorite scenes is when, um, when they have uh, Anderson tied to a chair, uh, Dave, Dave Chappelle grabs her lawgiver and is going to try and shoot her with it. Um, now, if you if you know the Dread comic books, you know what's coming. I don't think you knew what was coming. No, I didn't. But basically, he tries to shoot her. He's like, because like he, he, I think she pisses him off or something like that. He's like, what? What do you got to say to that bitch? She's like, I don't know, bitch. So he tries to fire, and the gun makes this, like, eh, sound like, you know, like, you know, like, uh, like, you know, this is a, an un- unlicensed user. Well, the thing about the lawgiver is, if you're not a judge, the gun explodes and blows his hand off. And then I think Hershey kills him. I, th- I want to say he gets, he, she, like, snaps his neck or something. Yeah. And so, around that time... No, I also really love that they also prove that, like, not all the street judges are perfect. Because Mama actually has a bunch of judges on her payroll. Um, which actually is a thing, because there are corrupt street judges. It's like, um, basically, Dispatch gets two other judges there to try and get the doors up. And then her corrupt judges come in and shoot the other two judges. And then, basically, they kill anyone that knows what's going on. Because they, they want to play it that, like... You know, when we got here, the, ju- the, the, the judges were killed. It, you know, it was an accident or something. And so, like, the poor Moore guy gets shot. <laughs> and it, it was actually really cool, because, like, uh, one of my favorite scenes is one of the one of the judges get, tries to get the drop on Hershey. Or, not Hershey, Anderson, sorry. Hershey's the other one. But, you know, she tries to, like, play the whole, you know, stand down, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Because, like, Anderson gets, like, one of the, the guys' machine guns and just blows her away. Which was awesome because, like, I was like, "Yeah, they didn't. She didn't fall for it because she's a psychic." That was actually really clever. Um, the only the only problem I have with this movie, if I if I were to say anything, was probably the fight with Judge and the one corrupt street judge that was hand to hand. Because it's too hard to tell, tell who's, who's who. who. Which is like the I, I think the only flaw of the fact that Dread has to wear his helmet all the time because all the other judges do too, except Anderson because the the helmet uh, is interferes with the telekinesis yeah, telekinesis. So apparently they they're, they 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 work on magneto powers. Um, but to be fair, it, 
the rest of the film is is gun violence, so like it doesn't it, it's not as bad. You can tell who's who during the gunfights. Um but basically we get to one of my favorite scenes where the two judges have dread pinned and he's ran out of ammunition. Because he manages to shoot one of them, but then the leader is still around. He's like, so how much does it pay these days to betray the law? Or how much does it pay these days to shoot a street judge? Million credits. <coughs> Million. Doesn't seem like much to betray the law. Like, the fact that he does the Stallone lines and actually makes them cool is amazing. And so, like... Like... My, my other favorite part is Dred, he, Dred gets shot. And the, so, like, he's, like, he's on the floor. He can't really move. And the judge has him, like, you know, the gun right to his head. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. The famous Judge Dredd has a gun point to his head. And the last words he says are, wait? Yeah. Wait. And then, Dredd, and then cut to Anderson shooting the dude dead. Wait for her. <laughs> yes. Um, of course, probably my favorite scene in the whole movie is when they finally get to Mama. So, okay, so Mama has has rigged the whole building with explosives, like at least the first, the top fifty, basically. It, um, and she has it set to like a what's those a dead man switch. It's a dead man switch. Basically, if she dies, the whole building, the the top fifty floors will explode and just bring a and just bring the whole building down. And I think Hershey, yeah, yeah, Hershey gets shot at one point. At this point, Dread manages because he took some ammo clips off the other judges. Reloaded his lawgiver. Um, I also love Anderson because she's like, "Yes, I know. I lost my 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 lawgiver, so like I've lost, but I, but like we're not done until this is over." Which actually I think impressed Dread because at the end of the movie he passes her, and I think that was why he passed her because she still wanted to you know commit you know pass pass the law and such. So he manages to shoot Mama in a way that wasn't lethal right away. And so yeah, he shoots her on the side. Yeah, because basically he's like, "This building is two hundred feet of cement. You really think it'll f the, sw the 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 switch will find it at the bottom?" So he picks her up because she was on like her bed. He picks her up, doses her with slow mo, and we get my like this scene is awesome. Mama of Pete of the Mama clan, you're charged with create with uh, selling selling drugs and the attempted murder of a street judge. How do you plead? And so, like, all she does is just blow a ring of smoke in Dredd's face. <coughs> and Dredd goes, defense noted. And throws her out the glass. And we get this scene where literally, I think, like, it's a, it's a minute. It's like the, a minute of her just falling. falling. And then you see from her angle as, like, she hits the cement and just blood goes everywhere. And Dredd just standing up at the, at the top of the building like, yeah, I'm awesome. <laughs> and so... You know, Dredd, you know, he talks to uh, to the, the Chief Justice. He's like, you know, they got kind of crazy there, didn't it? it you know, because like, Dredd's getting, you know, patched up still. Because, you know, he only field-dressed the wound. Um, And so basically she's like, so... What, do you, what did you... Did she pass or fail? And you think this whole movie, he's going to fail her. And he's just like, she passes. I thought you'd say that. And of course we get the the, the the you know the 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 retread of the the openings. And it's great cuz you see Hershey carrying her butt her helmet walking to like, you know, get on her bike to go deliver justice. Um so do you think this movie should have gotten a sequel? I definitely think it could have. Um I I understand from a business perspective why they probably didn't go with it just cuz yeah. it didn't make probably didn't make a lot of money. Um but I definitely think it had room for a sequel and I I hope that when the current state of the world improves yeah. that this could get a Netflix adaptation because I definitely think Netflix could yeah. could do wonders with it. Yeah, because it's so sad because it, it's been like eight years since they've, they've been talking about that. You know, I, I'd actually like to see them do some of like Dredd's classic villains like Mean Machine or the Death Judges, like the, the weird demon judges that like come from an alternate dimension or get that scene where he punches a demon through the head while shouting gaze into the fist of Dredd. But like, I, yeah. Um, what are your what was your opinion on Carl Urban as a? <clears throat> oh, I thought Carl Urban did a fantastic job in this movie. Um, he really. I, I know a big thing with this was that you told me he should play Batman. Oh yeah. And after watching it, I can totally understand why you would say that. Yeah, because like he he does such a good job emoting emotion, 
without having yeah. half of his face visible. You know, just the lower half of his face. He does a great job conveying, you know, what what the character is supposed to be thinking, what the character is supposed to be feeling. He does all that with just the lower half of his face. And yeah. to me, that takes a lot of skill. <clears throat> to say nothing of, like... Because, like, if you've ever seen the movie Red, his combat skill... Like, his martial arts skills are great. Like, he looks like Bruce Wayne. He could fight in that costume. Like, he's perfect. And I'm so mad. Like, nothing against Robert Pattinson, but, like... You have Carl Urban right here. Look at him. He perfect. He baby. Not good enough. <laughs> But like, um, and if you're like I, I, I don't think I give enough credit to Anderson because I I love Anderson in this movie, but it's just I, Dread is just so perfect and just, and you're right because like you can tell like the whole movie he's just barely holding back all the rage and anger he just wants to. There's a reason there's a GIF on Facebook Messenger where it's just him shaking with rage. No, like I'm bejiggling with rage these last few months. Because like everyone talked about how he's a method actor, I'm like. I don't know what he did to get that angry. Like, I'm assuming he just has, like, a clothespin on, like, his dick the entire movie. <laughs> or wh whatever he did to to get that, to get the anger across that Judge Dredd is an angry motherfucker who, who don't take shit from no one. He's, he's a Tobey Maguire fan who <laughs> watched all the Andrew Garfield movies. You know, you, you make jokes, but... Um, for me, I actually wouldn't mind them doing a TV show, because, like, you could do a lot with, like, a TV show with Dread. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. If, if it were me, I would love for us to, like, explore the Cursed Earth stuff, um, like, a storyline they could do, and it's one of the ones in the, because I have a, a Judge Dread collection that, like, it's kind of more of, like, a sampler, because it doesn't have, like, full stories for a lot of them, but basically, um, Mega City 1 delivers this antidote to Mega City 2, uh, which is the other big one, because it's... It's like the entire western seaboard. And in the comics, there's only like three mega cities. We're here, it's five, but maybe that changed after a while. But basically, there's this virus that causes um, people to become like these weird rage zombies that crave what they call the forbidden fruit. Um, and that's because the, the, the disease is, is uh, it's like TU, T1 or something like that. 2D. And basically, they, 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 they're cannibals that eat flesh thinking it's the... The Forbidden Fruit, Tutti Fruity. Which, you know, Tutti Fruity. Yeah. They did parody. Um, and it was interesting because basically they, they fly the drug in. Because basically, like, it's too dangerous to drive across the, the, the scorched earth because there's mutants and just, like, cannibals and people that, like... It, basically, it's like like a fall... Like, walking like, across like fallout. fallout. Yeah. Like, you, like, you'll have raiders and just... You'll, Super you, mutants. Yeah. So... <clears throat> They fly it across. Unfortunately, the mutant outbreak is so bad, like, all of them but one judge gets killed. Later on, he ends up actually being affected by the virus. He's one of, like, the 10% that isn't uh, curable by the antidote. And unfortunately, poor Judge Dredd has to kill him. And Dredd's like, no, all right. I'm going to have to... <clears throat> we, don't, we can't fly in, so there's only one thing I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to ride across the scorched earth. Because I, I, I got to. Because I, like, I owe it to this guy. So, him and three judges, one of which is Hershey, which I think you'd love the comic book version of Hershey. She's not very good in the, in the first Judge movie, but she's awesome. In... <clears throat> so, them and a guy, a, like a criminal that he knows that has driven across the scorched earth and has actually survived it. Uh, basically, they get into this big tank thing that they built, and they have to ride across the scorched earth. And I, because you could film that for cheap. You could just film out in the Southwest. Yeah. Um... Other things I'd like to see, I'd love for them, if they were going to make a Dread 2, I'd love for them to redo the Rico thing. It's because the Rico thing's way more interesting. And it's basically like Solid Snake, where Dread is the weaker clone, because like he wasn't ever as good as Rico. But Dread still manages to persevere, because it's not genes that make you a street judge, it's how willing you are to, to protect the job, law. Basically. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> heck, I wouldn't have even minded, like, you could, you could totally get Stallone to come back, and he could be the new Chief Justice. I'd be down for that. I'd, oh, he'd be great. Like, you could even have it that he's just pissed off. He grabs a gun. No way this town betrays the law! Just, oh. You could have both dreads on screen. It'd be great. Um. Yeah, I... Like if they did a Batman movie with all the all the live-action Batman. No, you know what? We get Pattinson on the phone. We're gonna do Batman, Judge Dredd. 
We're gonna have Judge Dredd come to Gotham. We're gonna have the weird, the weird, creepy Judge Death. They're going at, just make it. They're going after the Phantasm. I mean, that'd be cool too. But you know, <laughs> so. um, so if you can tell, guys, I love this movie, and I highly recommend if you can get a copy of it, watch it because it's. It's great. You don't you don't need the 3D effect like a lot of people think you do because it, it's still pretty good without the 3D effect. Because uh, we watched this on my DVD copy, um, you know, because like I, I think a lot of people missed out on this and didn't give it enough credit because of the first movie. But like, it, if you really love just awesome action, watching like Judge Dredd be awesome and just watching Carl Urban do crazy shit, you gotta watch this movie. Like I said, I recommend it. I, I went into it with really no expectations and honestly enjoyed it a lot. <clears throat> but, uh... But yeah, I think, I think that'll wrap that up. Uh, we kind of did a couple short ones here, because... Well, Kingdom Come was so damn long. Yeah, because if you hadn't told, we, we basically recorded four four videos, and I don't and I don't want our recording to, like, completely run out of data. We should have changed our clothes for each episode. We should have done. One of them, we should have swapped shirts. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, give the shippers what they want. It's but anyway, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up for this uh, this episode of Remember the Hyphen. Like I said, uh, link in the description below to get yourself a copy. You can probably find this pretty easily. Um, but anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, come back next week when we've got uh, more stuff to talk about. Until then, I'm Zongetsu134. I'm Everest Joe Squad. And we ask you, as always, remember, remember the, the hyphen, hyphen and take, take care. care.